gosh, look at the crowd. Come this way. Those who spread goodness radiate happiness to everyone around them. Introducing LOLC Finance Credit Cards. Fuel the goodness in you. Welcome to LMD TV. I'm Fazbina Imamuddin. Tonight with us is Shiran Fernando. Hello, Shiran. I welcome you to the show. Hi, Fazbina. I'm good to be on the show. What is your big picture of the state of the economy at this time? Um, so I think a lot of things are uh, unraveling uh, quite as we speak right now, uh, but if you look at it um, in terms of the macro picture, we're seeing uh, with the you know, the forex crisis, the sovereign debt crisis with us uh, telling our creditors that, you know, we cannot continue to uh, service that debt. Um, and also reserves, almost uh, usable reserves, almost around 100 million um, US dollars. It's, it's really slowing down the economy. Uh, so we've gone from, um, you know, expanding uh, and then seeing a lot of economic activity on the ground, uh, we're now seeing it more uh, curtailed and, and, of course, restricted to what can be done. Uh, of course, certain sectors of the economy, like exports, are continuing to do um, quite, quite well, and, and that's uh, reflective of the demand uh, that's presently there. Uh, but I think it's a slowing economy. We might uh, already look at some of the indicators, like. Uh, the Purchasing Managers Index, which looks at the activities in the manufacturing and services sector. Uh, those indices are showing uh, the slowdown as well. Um, and we're also seeing um, inflation um, growing at a very rapid pace. Although last month, I think we did see the growth at least month on month uh, easing a little bit. Uh, so that's also having an impact on, on businesses, on, on the people as well. Uh, so it's it's a slow it's a low growth um, high inflationary economy at the moment and, and a lot of that has to do with how we now negate our uh, sovereign debt crisis and, and really manage uh, the liquidity situation so that things don't go uh, much worse from this point but uh, we actually have a way out of the current, of the current crisis. Uh, it was announced this afternoon that the budget amendment bill will be presented on 9th of August. What are the likely key amendments, Shiran? Yeah, so I'm, I'm, we don't have too much of expectations from the interim budget other than maybe uh, realignment of expenditure. I think we did see uh, in 2021, uh, November, uh, when the then uh, prior finance minister kind of announced the budget, we saw a lot of expenditure items uh, and things done at a provincial level and certain programs and allocations made. Uh, so I think the expectation is that some of these will be re reallocated to provide some level of relief, uh, maybe to add to existing um, social safety programs like some of the or uh, some of the allowances that we're seeing uh, for uh, different uh, marginalized communities as well. Or it could be um, reallocation to fresh kind of uh, relief as well. Uh, so I think that's kind of the biggest expectation, but maybe there might be uh, in the lead up to an IMF uh, program as well. Maybe we will um, see certain things announced on the tax policy side as well, uh, because uh, the key thing even the, even the Prime Minister, uh, even the President today mentioned in his speech is that you know, we need to go uh, from on negative deficits in the uh, on, on the primary side of the budget to a positive uh, within the, I think by 2025 is, is, is. So to get to that really requires a lot more uh, revenue, tax revenue or non-tax revenue um, and certain cut down in expenditure. So I'm not expecting too much out of the budget. I think it will just be a precursor to a pension IMA program and then people 
we'll see maybe three months down the line in November, uh, maybe a, a fully fledged budget for the following year. Uh, but this this budget will kind of be an indicate indicatory kind of budget of you know things to come and maybe a certain relief for uh, for the public as well. well. What steps have been taken to ensure that we will have fuel and gas for the next three months? So if you look at gas, particularly, um, I think uh, in towards the end of June we saw uh, close to about hundred thousand. Uh, metric tons of gas being uh, ordered, uh, which is which according to estimates is enough for about four months so till till October, and we've seen that distribution taking place. Um, uh, it was overall kind of a ninety million um, US dollar uh, uh, purchase or import expenditure, out of which the World Bank uh, contributed close to about seventy million of it, and that was the World Bank repurposing some of their existing. Uh, funds uh, that were allocated for uh, different projects they have, uh, repurposing some of that to make this uh, payment possible. So I think in the, in, in terms of the next four, four or five months, it seems that uh, again, the situation might be uh, under control. Of course, we need to be then thinking of, you know, either forward booking or depending on how prices are moving, thinking about how we plan beyond November, uh, and, and into the next year as well, maybe six months uh, planning, and, and that will really require, uh, you know, ordering and, and the procurement process. On the fuel side, I think uh, what's very evident is uh, since about March, April, and, and May, we really uh, um, managed the situation because of the India credit line that, that was provided to uh, make purchases of fuel. Once that was over, we did see. Uh, in, in June and, and parts of July, how, uh, you know, that wasn't poor as it were. And uh, now we've kind of managed to, uh, through reserves and, and uh, Central Bank maybe buying from the, the market, being able to uh, purchase a few uh, few of these ships and, and we're seeing uh, some of that now coming into the market. So it will be very much a monthly kind of exercise uh, because um, that doesn't seem to be uh, announcements or fresh credit lines or uh, assistance at the moment from uh, bilateral or multilateral lenders. And unless exports pick up further than what it is at the moment, or tourism or remittances uh, pick up, in particular remittances, if it does pick up, that will provide that additional uh, financing. Other, otherwise, it will be really managing within uh, what we're getting for our exports, within what we're getting for remittances. And within what we're getting for um, what we're getting for tourism to be able to pay for the monthly uh, fuel bill, uh, so I think that's kind of at least in the next few months that's that potentially what will what will play out. According to the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, the country's merchandise trade balance reported a surplus surplus in June for the first time in twenty years. Can this be sustained? So it, it really depends, I feel, on three three factors. So if you look at a trade deficit, it's basically uh, what you export, your merchandise exports, your tea, your barrel, coconut, rubber, uh, and those exports uh, minus your import expenditure, uh, fuel to what you kind of import, maybe food uh, and, and dairy and, and other investment goods. Uh, so it, the first factor would be really, can the export growth be sustained? I think we've, we've exports has done particularly well in the first half. Um, barrel, notably as well. I think it's uh, it had quite a peak in, in June as well. Um, the worry here is less so domestic, but more uh, external, because uh, right now there is a lot of concern whether the global economy, uh, in particular countries like um, the US, uh, like the Euro uh, European Union, so countries that would get into a recessionary period where growth will contract and what, what will that mean for uh, demand and in particular uh, consumption on our export items uh, like apparel uh, and, and rubber and certain other kind of key exporting uh, items. So uh, maybe the next three months the export momentum could be sustained but uh, beyond that really it depends how uh, much of a uh, slowdown that we might see in the global economy. Um, on imports I think if you look at it um, 
if you look at uh, imports minus what we spend on coal, it's already slowing down. Uh, so it was, you know, averaging um, close to uh, 1.3, uh, 1.7 billion um, in, in the la last part of last year and earlier this year. But uh, in the last few months, it's actually been, if you take away the fuel side of it, it's been about a billion. Um, so imports in, in that sense has slowed down um, already. And I think that, that will kind of continue. The factor which will really uh, determine is how much of you know coal imports uh, will come in. One of the key reasons why we did, got a trade surplus was because in June, uh, coal imports fell, fell from about 400 million to 200 million. And that's where this surplus came about. Uh, but for example, in July, we've ordered, you know, uh, we've got some force on the coal that will likely be higher and maybe we might not be able to maintain it. Uh, but going forward, I think it will have to be a managing what you get in terms of your exports to what you're getting in terms of your imports um, until the bridge financing and, and other uh, incomes like tourism and remittances coming. We will need bridging, bridging finance to tide us through until the IMF's first tranche hopefully comes in. Where do you think this will come from? Yeah, so I think if we, uh, in terms of the IMF, you have to look at it uh, in two timelines uh, between when are we going to get a staff level agreement, which is basically uh, the two technical sides, the central bank, the Ministry of Finance, and and the treasury kind of uh, together with the IMF teams agree on uh, certain benchmarks and, and uh, the way forward in terms of the re key reforms needed plus on the debt sustainability side as well. Uh, so when when will the staff level agreement kind of be announced? And I think the president today was talking about uh, towards the end of August. Um, so if, if that, for example, is, uh, is uh, you know, coming towards the end of August, maybe post an uh, announcement of that, maybe it's a strong staff level agreement, sends out the right signals, that might kind of give some confidence to maybe bilateral or multilateral partners to think of new financing mechanisms. Uh, but sometimes even that might not inspire confidence or uh, uh, maybe uh, these lenders might want to see uh, the IMF program in place. Uh, so that's where from the staff level agreement to the IMF board really passing the uh, 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 passing a necessary kind of agreement that Sri Lanka is you know ready for a three or four year program. That's uh, what will come to and for that really to happen, the IMF has to be comfortable to know that the that sustainability process will ensure that our debt, which was which they classified and, and not classified as unsustainable will become uh, sustainable as well. Uh, so I, I would say bridge financing has to be seen within those two timelines. What what can come with an, and uh, you know the final IMF program coming in and, and what can be achieved potentially post uh, the, the IMF staff agree, uh, IMF board passing uh, the program as well. Um, in that case, Shiran, what can we expect in terms of forex inflows for the rest of the year, given the high degree of perceived risk among foreign investors and lenders? Yeah, so I think it will be very limited to um, it will be very limited to the inflows that we will get on the tourism side as well. Uh, I think it's a case of can we move from fifty to one hundred million US dollars in tourism uh, receipts monthly to maybe back to somewhere around 200 or even 300 million. Uh, can, how do we get, get to that in particular uh, with the winter season, you know, coming uh, for most of our key markets as well. Uh, then really on the remittances side, I think that's where uh, I think the government has tried so much of uh, the incentives, certain things, looking at the informal market a bit more strongly, uh, different things, but yet uh, we're seeing only half of remittances coming in on a monthly basis. Uh, so can, you know, something, we're getting around 250 to 300 million, can that go back to about 400, 500 million incrementally that gives you another, um, you know, 200, uh, 300 million. 
So I think a bunch of these factors plus FDI, I think for a direct investment, difficult to think of that right now with um, so many factors not going in our favor, but at least if some of the uh, existing companies are reinvesting, uh, increasing capacity or uh, you know putting putting investments back, maybe that might also um, spur some level of inflows inflows as well. So I think those are the kind of the main uh, inflows that we really look at, and maybe post staff level agreement and the IMF program really uh, coming into play, we might then see uh, some of the bilateral players. Uh, having more confidence to lend to us. How much does the country need to finance essential imports going forward? Yeah, so like I said, if you look at uh, if you look at the ascent, if you look at the import basket as a whole, it's it's kind of uh, shrinking. I think in June it was about 1.2 billion. Um, you take away the four component, it's a billion. Uh, then you look at our exports as well. It's about one one point one billion. Um, in that sense, you could say that you know uh, the exports are somewhat now matching our imports, but uh, unlike imports, which have to be kind of uh, you know uh, the expenditure takes place quite immediately, uh, exports proceeds don't come in, in in one go, and that there are credit periods and so on and so forth. So there is a cash flow mismatch, and I think uh, that's where the market sometimes goes short maybe 200 to 300 million uh, a month. Uh, and that's where this, you know, bridging finance and all uh, comes into play. Uh, so I think that's kind of the kind of, you know, the shortfall we are playing with. Of course, I think the only, uh, the probably a positive factor in, in a sense of when a global downturn happens is maybe commodity prices might uh, reduce. Uh, so oil, which was hovering above 110, 120 now, is around the $100 a barrel market uh, price point. So can that maybe come down to 90 or 80? Uh, if those factors come in, um, some of the food commodity prices as well, uh, if it eases out as well, maybe that will you know reduce uh, the value spent uh, component as well. And, and that might ease up a bit of, our, of the pressure as well. So some of these factors have to go uh, our way. So Shiran, do you see the rupee value holding its ground in the next six months? Um, so I think the stability right now really depends on confidence uh, because I think even, even in the past, we've tried to uh, hold the currency at a certain level and it hasn't uh, it didn't quite materialize. Um, of course, a bit of a difference between now and then is of course the steep depreciation is already um, taken place. Uh, so we need to, I think, see uh, the export momentum continuing. I think if that takes place, more positive signals coming out of the debt restructuring box, uh, the talks with the IMF, um, and of course, more stability on, on the political side and social stability coming in. I think that will kind of assist the rupee to um, stay around these levels. Uh, but if, for example, there are delays, um, confidence as a whole comes, goes worse than, uh, you know, what it is right now, then the rupee could be very much uh, under pressure in that sense. Um, will the events in Taiwan today have an impact on the trade and supply chains? What risks are there? Um, so I think the, it's, it's definitely heightening global uh, tension, geopolitical tensions, uh, which Already, I think there was a lot of tension between these two countries, China and the US. Um, there was moves to kind of ease at least some of the trade tensions, uh, roll back some of the tariffs that the US had on, on Chinese goods uh, because of how it was ha having an impact on inflation in, in the US. Um, so I think some of that might um, have a little bit of concern. Uh, uh, that could also uh, escalate things like commodity prices as well. Uh, so that's also, I think, a little bit of a concern because in a global downturn, you'd expect these commodity prices to uh, slowly ease out. But if there is expectations or escalation of geopolitical tensions and concern of some level of the conflict, as we saw with the Russia-Ukraine conflict as well, uh, commodities could, could uh, 
uh, pick up uh, based on this level of volatility. So I think that's the big big concern, or big picture concern for us in terms of getting a little bit of this backlash. How do you think the political stability of the country and the threat of more violence affect the economy and our funding prospects? See, I, I think you see stability on three fronts. I would see uh, political stability, uh, economic stability, and then social stability. Uh, fundamentally, what was an economic uh, crisis is now detailed kind of the stability that you saw on the political side and on the social side as well. Um, so each of them are interlinked. The moment you know you do see issues in, on the poll side and things like that, social stability comes under pressure. That has an impact on on the political stability as well. Um, so it, I think the 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 key thing uh, is really the need, uh, in particular uh, in, in parliament and within within government, at least for. Uh, it talks about a you know all party government or at least uh, some level of common program, uh, which is agreed by all parties because uh, the reform needs to take place. There's a lot of uh, difficult reforms, be it so state-owned enterprise reform, or, uh, public sector reform, or even reforms in the energy sector, uh, which need to be well thought out, which needs everyone's backing, um, which needs clear communication to the public as to why you know these are being done. Uh, and we don't want certain things backtracked as well, because that's that's also you know kept a lot of investors uh, back in the past as well. Uh, so I think if if that consensus can be achieved and there's clear communication, you know, of, of the steps that need to be taken, then the stability on all the three funds will come together. Uh, without which, I think we might go in you know these cycles um, where the social stability has an impact on the political stability and overall kind of economic stability then gets dragged down uh, as a result of it. And, and we might go in circles trying to uh, uh, kind of you know, uh, move forward. So I, I think this common framework or common agenda or common minimum program, whatever we want to frame it as, needs to really uh, come into uh, fruition uh, because it's, it's not only the next six months, if, even if it's an IMA program or even without an IMA program, there will be key things that the economy will need to go through and, and in reform that needs to take place. Um, otherwise, you know, we're going to be in the same spot uh, without moving forward. Thank you, Shiran. It's great that you've taken the time to address some of the more pressing concerns that have been looming over our heads as the crisis continues and the future becomes increasingly questionable. Thank you, Fatima. Thank you for having me on the show. And thank you, Lindy. Have a good evening and good night. Good night. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you for watching and stay safe.